What we're going to be looking at here is calculating the bond's effective interest rate here, a premium on the bond, and also the interest expense on the bond. And we're going to be using this example here where Corporation A issues $800,000 worth of bonds here at 10%. That's the uh, face uh, stated rate of interest on the bond here. And they're going to be 20-year bonds, and they're going to issue them here on 1120X1 at what they call 102 here, which really means 102% of the par value or the face value bond so that's simply taking uh, 800,000 here times 102 percent so that's going to be the issue price and we'll look at that here now the interest is payable semi-annually or twice per year here on 1-1 one, one, and also on 7-1 each year here. Now Corporation A uses the effective interest method here for amortizing, amortizing a bond, either the bond premium or the bond discount. So what we have to do here when we're dealing with bonds is we, in using this effective interest here method here, you have to set up an, an amortization schedule here. Now what we're going to be looking at um, is two things here. We're going to be looking at the case here where we don't know what the effective interest rate is here. What we've we were given here, we know these semi-annual payments, that there's 40 of them in this case, and the amount of the payment, we can calculate that easily enough here. And we're also going to know the uh, beginning or issue price or the beginning carrying value of this bond here. That was the 800,000 times 102%. So that's case one. We're going to have to determine the effective interest rate, giving uh, the um, fact of uh, numbers that we have here. The issue price we know and then the payments here. Now uh, we also are going to be looking at case two here where we're not going to know what the um, issue price is. We're going to have to calculate that here. But we know what the effective we're going to know what the effective interest rate is and then we know all the other factors at well as well here. So what we're really trying to do when we're doing these bond problems here is we want to determine what our interest expense is here and we're using the effective interest rate method and this is the interest expense that we recognize on our income statement and we do that by amortizing our bond from whatever in discount or a premium in this case we're looking at a premium we have to discount it down here so and uh, we have to assign a, a amortization uh, cost here or amount here for each of the periods here so what we're going to do here in this case we got that eight hundred and sixteen thousand dollars we're given that as our issue price here and we have to amortize that down to eight hundred thousand dollars here at the uh, when the bond is mature here okay so that's the case here and when we know our amortization amount we can um, determine what the interest expense is because the interest expense recognized here is really uh, reduced. Uh, you, you, you've got your cash payment here each period, you know that, but this cash payment here uh, is reduced by the amort amount that you're amortizing here uh, for each period and that gives you your interest expense that you're going to recognize on this bond. So we're going to look at uh, case one here where we have to calculate the effective interest rate here and then we'll move into case two here where we don't know what the issue price is and we'll have to calculate that. So let's go down here and look at case one. Okay, what we know that the bond was issued here, we know what the bond issue price is here, it was $816,000. So it was actually issued at a premium here because uh, uh, the face amount here was $800,000 but uh, we would receive $816,000 in cash and then we know what a quoted rate or a quoted amount here the par amount here or the face amount here was 102 percent of the face amount for $816,000 so what we have to do is we either have to use our financial calculator here or an Excel function and I'll go through an Excel function for uh, determining what the effective interest a rate is here. So, okay, for this, what you'd have to do here, I'm in Excel, you just use this yield function here, and you have to know what the settlement date is. That's the date that you purchased the bond here or issued the bond, and that was 1 1, and we'll use 2010 here as the issue date. And then the maturity date here, that uh, 20 years out here, and that's 1 1. 2030 here and then the rate the stated rate of interest on the bond here was 10 percent and then the key here is the uh, price and the redemption amount here now this is and then of course the frequency here we, we know it's semi-annual in this case so it would be two if it was quarterly we'd use a four here but the key is when you're using these calculators here or excel function you have to put in the right numbers here for the purchase price and the redemption now remember uh, our our issue costs or pri purchase price here would have been 
$816,000. And then we know it's going to be redeemed here or what has to be paid out here is $800,000. But when you're putting those uh, numbers into your calculator, you have to put them in units of 100 here. So what you would do is just take, eight, in this case, 816,000 divided, uh, that was the issue pr uh, price here, divided by the uh, what you're going to, the redemption amount here of 800,000, you're going to come up with a ratio of 1.02 here. So, and what you would do here is you have to put that into your calculator here, is that it would be like 102 here for the uh, price that was issue price here and then the redemption would have been 100. So that's the key here when you're using these financial calculators or um, in this case this Excel function here. And then also for we're going to determine here that when we put all these numbers in here and uh, we're going to get a uh, um, yield rate here or the effective interest rate at 9.7705 percent. Now remember we're work dealing with a semi-annual interest rate here or what we're when we're using our doing our bond calculations here for that uh, those semi-annual payments we have to divide that by two in this case because they're semi-annual here. We're going to come up with 4.8853 percent. So let's go back and look at our amortization schedule here and how we'd use this uh, effective interest rate here. So what we do here when we set up these schedules, in this case we know what the bond issue price is. Its carrying amount here is $816,000 in the, when it's issued here at the, on 1120X10 here. And then we have to determine the interest expense here for the first period here. We know that we're paying out $40,000 in cash, but what is the interest expense for this first period here, uh, this sem first this semi-annual interest payment here. So that's simply, uh, remember we calculated the effective interest rate here. All you do is take that times your carrying amount, in this case it was $816,000, the beginning amount, that times 4.8853 percent is going to give you an interest expense here of $39,864. Now that's for the first period here. So uh, what we do here for our amortization here, uh, we have to take the um, all we do is take the cash paid here of 40000 less the interest expense here, $39,864. we are going to get an amount of uh, premium amortization here of $136 uh, dollars here. So uh, what we do here for our new carrying amount, we just subtract the 800, 136 here from our uh, carrying, uh, carrying balance here of $816,000. we are going to come up with 815000 864. So that's how we use this amortization schedule here. Just for the next period, you just take your, your carrying amount is here times your effective interest rate. You get your interest expense here. Subtract that from the cash payment that was made on this for this uh, first second period here in this case, and you're going to get the new amortized amount here. Subtract that from the carrying value. You come up with your new carrying value for the next period here. So what we've done here is we've first case is We've calcu we calculated its effective interest rate here, and we knew what the carrying amount or the issue price of the bond here at this issue date was here. So we were able to amortize it down using this effective interest rate. Now we're going to look at case two here, where we uh, have an effective interest rate, but we don't know what the um, issue price of the bond is. So let's let's go up and look at that here. So okay, so case two. You got the bond issue price here is unknown here. In our problem, we were giving it, we were giving it here at eight hundred and sixteen thousand dollars here, uh, based on that one hundred and two percent uh, percent our that amount that was the nomenclature here for issuing the bond. We knew that here, but let's just say the case is we don't know that, but. We know the effective interest rate here at 9.7705 percent. We put it in our calculator and we determined that our effective interest rate was 9.77. Or we didn't. What we didn't uh, we didn't know what the issue price is here, but we were given this. Just say you're looking at some market tables or what the market rate of interest for that particular bond is, and you're giving it a 9.7705 percent, and that was an annual rate here. So. What we have to de determine here is the bond issue price at either a premium or a discount. We don't know what it is at this case. So it's really what we're looking at here is that this bond here is divided up between its payment amount here 
and its face value amount. And it has a present value for each of those here. So we're going to just look at some key items here when you're sticking it into your calculator. So what we have to do here is we're going to go down here and we have to determine what the issue or the sale price of this bond is. We don't know it. Well, we were given, we knew that from our problem here, it's, it's going to have to turn out to be $816,000. And we know what the par value or the face value of the bond is, $800,000. So knowing our issue price here and comparing it to the par amount, we're going to get a premium on our bond here of $16,000. And that's where the bond sells for more than the face value here. But what we want to go is we want to look at how we calculate this uh, issue, issue price or the sale price of the bond here. So what it is is you take the present value of these interest payments. Remember there are $40,000 interest payments paid semi-annually for 20 years. So we're going to have 20 years here times two here. So you're going to have 40 payments here and then we're have, because we have to determine the interest for each of the periods here, you just take your total annual interest here that we had, divide it by two, and you're going to come up with 4.8853%. So that we know. We're given the interest payments here, the amount, and we know that the, um, the effective interest rate here. So you plug it into either your calculator or Excel here. You've got to put in the uh, um, interest that matches the periods. In this case, we had that 4.8853%, 40 periods. Uh, and um, we have $40,000 uh, payment per period. You stick that in here, and the present value is $697,280 here. So we determine what the present value of these interest payments are. So next thing we have here, the next component in this bond is the present value of the uh, face value. What it, in 20 years here, you're going to have to, you're either going to receive or you're going to pay out $800,000 on this bond. And again, we use this. Um, uh, effective interest rate that we have here in a semi-annual basis. We note that there's 40 payments here. Now the key is when you're putting this into your calculator here and you're working with this present value of this, um, eight, in this case it's 800000 out here at 20 years out, you have to put in, when you're dealing with bonds, you have to put in those number of periods, your semi-annual pe periods here, 40, 40 of them here. And we're going to discount this $800,000 um, maturity value back here to its present value here. And then number of periods, you have to match your effective interest rate for each of those periods. But you just can't put in like 20 years here and then put in any other interest percentage. You have to use this uh, this 40 years here since we have our 40 payments here since we have 40 of those and at the effective interest rate for each of those uh, payments here. So discounting our $800,000 back at that effective interest rate here uh, for 40 periods are going to come up with $118,714. So uh, what are issuer sales prices? It's simply the take the sum of these two present values of the payments here of 697,280 plus the present value of the uh, face amount or the maturity value here of, uh, of $118,714 and we get a issuer sales price here of $816,000. So here we knew the effective interest rate. We matched it for the periods here and remember you gotta when you're discounting them back here uh, especially with this uh, uh, f uh, maturity value here. Remember to put in the number of payments here and match it with the effective interest rate for each payment here. And then you can discount it back. So here we did. We've got our sales price of 816000 bonds uh, par value here of uh, 800000 And then the difference is, in this case, a premium here of $16,000. Had the sales price been less than the face value here, uh, then th the difference would be, in this case, it would be a discount here. Okay, so let's just go down and look real quickly here at recording this bond here. So uh, let's say when we issued it here, debited it for 816,000 bonds payable credit here in our balance sheet for 800,000 and then you set up your premium here since it's sold for more than the uh, uh, what we're going to 
then the maturity value here, the difference between the 816,000 to 800,000 gives us a credit here of $16,000. And then based on our, um, what we want to really look at here is how we, this interest expense, it comes right off our amortization schedule. So for our first period here, uh, we had 136, uh, amortized our bond by $136. So what we do here is we had that $40,000 payment we do, and we reduce that by the $136 amortization, we come up with $39,854 here, interest expense for the first period here. And then for that next period, well, we have to actually accrue the interest payable here because we're not going to pay it out till 1-1 one, one here. And at the end of the year, we're going to accrue it here for 1231. And that was a $40,000 interest payment again here. And then this is where we go up with that premium again here. It come off our amortization schedule, debit that here for, in this case, it was $140. $43. And then on our income statement here, again, our interest expense here, $39,857. So what we have is we have that $40,000 payment each period here, but it is uh, the interest expense that we recognize on our income statement is uh, reduced here by this amortization of the premium here. And then just to note here that uh, this premium that was set up here, when we get to the end and where bond is fully amortized, our premium account here will be zero. We'd have to amortize it all down here and then we would have recognized the corresponding interest expense for each period here. So what we've gone through here is just the typical bonds here and how you have to deal with the that effective interest rate and also how you'd amortize the bond here and then Again, we talked about uh, calculating the effective interest rate, uh, knowing the bond issue price here, and then we also looked at calculating the, knowing the effective interest rate, uh, we had to care, uh, determine what the bond's uh, issue price or sales price is.